we play, we laugh, we have been blessed. I left my American life behind to seek refuge in this French mountain village. But my worried mind spoils it all. I leave home, I go meet scientists, hoping their inner struggle will help me make sense of my own. I often tell people that I live in a sort of practical day-to-day -day denial of climate change because it is unbearable. To know what I know is unbearable. Un des gros problèmes auxquels on est confronté aujourd'hui, c'est qu'on a énormément de mal à se représenter un monde où il fera plus chaud. This is something big we're living through and it's profound. In some ways, this is what might be thought of as toxic knowledge. Once you know, you can never be the same. Increasingly, it will be a fortress world. It's about sacrificing more and more of the world in order for a few people to continue to live. Climate change is a huge manifest injustice which will drive many people to take all kinds of action which nobody will have control over. I was for a very long time struggling with one question. What is meaningful work on the way down? What's important, what's good, what's meaningful, it's, it all needs to be reassessed. Now, to confront this terrifying reality we're talking about is in, on a much grander scale, like confronting your own ending. And I think that's what we're asked to do as a human species, to confront that vulnerability and in the face of it, become more alive and to meet each other in that vulnerability. And you better turn around and see that sky. <laughs> Could collapse not be the end, but the beginning of our story? The earth is still here, brimming with life. I'm deeply convinced collapse awareness has the power to shake up our generation, a generation stranded in a state of political limbo. We must start believing what we know and acting upon our beliefs. But first, our predicament must be named. This is the story I want to tell.